so welcome to episode number three <laughs> how to be a transformational leader i am your host ray ireland and you are listening to the soul align podcast where we help high achieving leaders and driven visionaries do what they love and live their purpose first of all why why do you want to be a transformational leader in the first place, really, like what got you here? What is the interest? Obviously you're here, you saw the title, you know, there might be some curiosity. Maybe there's even this question mark in yourself of like, I don't know, like, do I want to be a transformational leader? I'm going to call you out on your actions and say, you probably do if you're here listening. Or maybe there's, there's this little piece of curiosity that you get to follow. Before we even begin to go into how, I think it's more important to really define what is a transformational leader. What is transformation anyways, right? We, we have this idea of transformation, transformation this, transformation program, transformational retreat, transformational environment. It's used so much over and over and over again and it's becoming one of those like pop words to follow. And so what is the definition of transformation anyways? It is a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. A thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. Okay, so notice there are no soft, love, light, rainbows. (laughs) None of those in the definition. So as a transformational leader, do you realize that that truly means guiding people through the experience of a dramatic shift in their life? So let's go back in time, right? Go into your own life, into your own experiences. When did you experience a dramatic shift in your life? But this could be something like shifting to a new school when you were growing up. Maybe this is shifting a relationship or it could be a bigger change. Maybe it's shifting the way you um, have a relationship with certain substances. I mean, all of these are truly big shifts, right? So think about that time. What else was happening? What else were you feeling and experiencing? Again, that time probably didn't have unicorns flying through the air and magic fairy dust, right? This was actually most likely an extremely challenging time for you that you went through and whether you were alone or you had support it was really really challenging so just like acknowledging yourself for going through that one moment we've all had a transformational experience in our life so just taking a moment for yourself and so as a transformational leader you are literally guiding people through that process this can actually be the most challenging time in someone's life where the leader would kind of step in and and say hey let me be your guide during this so you are truly there for them on every level. Transformation doesn't just happen to yourself. It doesn't just happen in a relationship. It affects every single area of your life because it is a big and drastic, dramatic shift that happens. Say you're sitting on a chair, one leg breaks. The chair is most likely not going to be fully sitting upright anymore. That surface that your body weight was on is going to shift and adjust. Now, for some, depending on that transformation, it might be just like a little crack. You can catch yourself, right? For others, that might actually mean that the whole chair breaks underneath you and you get thrown onto the ground, right? And so as a transformational leader, you are truly there for them in whatever that looks like. We could easily jump into how you can help others, right? As a transformational leader, I want to lead others in their transformation. And yet, guess what it always starts with? (laughs) Yourself. So the question to bring up is, have you ever been there for yourself during these times? Now, of course you're gonna say, well, yeah, I was there. Like, of course, but truly, Did you show up 100% for yourself, especially in those times where you really wanted to run away, where you wanted to get out of your body, you wanted to leave the situation? So many times we see this happening over and over again with these different coping mechanisms that we have. 
And this isn't to say that you shouldn't have a coping mechanism, right? It's part of our human nature. But a lot of times those coping mechanisms take ourselves outside of the experience. It's almost like we, we need a break. Like whatever's happening in life is too much, okay? I experienced it yesterday and I'm like, oh, I just want, I just need to go get like a massage. And so that was my coping mechanism to step out and not fully be in that present gunk that was coming up. So it's normal and natural, but look at what are you using to cope? And are these things actually going to be benefiting you in the long run? A lot of times substances come in during transformation because it's like, I don't want to deal with this. This is crazy. This is too much for me to handle by myself. I need to have some numbing happen. And so you kind of step out in that way. Or maybe if it's in a relationship, you're like, I just need to take space. Okay, let's just end this for now. We'll revisit it later. All right, we see this time and time again. So in these moments, take care of yourself, but also ask yourself, am I showing up 100% for myself? And am I running away? If so, what am I really running away from? This life is mirroring back, is reflecting back what is happening internally at all times. So if there's an external situation happening that is making you want to run away, take a moment and, and just be with yourself and feel into what am I wanting to run away from? What feels like this is too much? Because there's often, that's a key, a guidance point into something deeper. But because of the fact that you are here shows me that you are already doing this work, right? Or you're at least curious, like I said in the beginning, about what this can look like. And I can guarantee you that if you are in those spaces, which you are, <laughs> even if you don't know it right now, you are, I can guarantee you that there are at least a million people out there that are behind you in the sense of they haven't even begun to start to question the state of their life, the state of their relationships, the state of their business or their professional life, and in a bigger scale, the state of the world and what's not working. They haven't even begun to become curious. So I want you to know how important your role is as a transformational leader starting now. We think that we need to be at this certain level before we say, oh, I'm a leader, I can guide people. Well, what about on the playground? What about the little kids when you were a little kid? You know, I'm sure you can remember who that leader was on the playground. As you think about that leader, right, they're just a little kid. What did they know? It doesn't really matter what they know because they are taking these courageous steps forward before the others and therefore are showing this experience of what can be possible. And others then look at them and say, wow, I wanna try that out, right? And now, of course, it depends on what that trying out is. But for instance, let's play around with this idea of the kid who can do the monkey bars. Who is that first kid that could just do all of the monkey bars during recess, right? He or she would just go up there and maybe you saw them try a few times and fail, but then eventually they got it. And all of a sudden, everyone is looking at them like they are magic, right? <laughs> that they know something so much more than us. And then what happens next? That competitive energy can come in. It can feel competitive or it can also feel like, okay, well, no, that's not my thing. I can't do that. You can start to understand how you react in these times of being a follower as well. But for instance, that kid on the playground that was leading, right? He didn't necessarily even know that he was leading, most likely. But just through his actions, he was able to guide others. And before you knew it, one other kid crossed over. And then in the next 10 minutes, another kid crossed over. And they all got led across the monkey bars. What is some a big takeaway from this? Is that that first kid that went all the way across, he led through example, through embodiment, through doing it. And that's such a powerful thing to remember because for some reason, leaders today kind of tend to forget this. And I will put my hands up, I'm not perfect. I think we've all experienced this where we get so passionate, so excited about leading someone or something that we forget to do it ourselves. And we're like, wait, me? You want I'm guiding you guys. But this is the most important thing. It helps 
give whoever's following that vision, that space of saying, oh, if he can do it, if she can do it, let me try and let me see if I can do what they just did. Hey, like to the kid that went across, did you hold your breath the whole time? Mm, no, I think I was actually breathing, breathing more. Okay, you go, oh, wow, I got one more bar done. Okay, well then on that last one, like what did you think about? Like how did you get over there? You know, you start getting to this state of curiosity. And as a leader, you get to do that for yourself. The cool thing is, is that I bet the kid that got across those monkey bars first on the school playground during recess, do you think that he maybe saw that somewhere else? He saw someone else get across them. Maybe it was the older brother. Maybe it was his dad. Maybe he even just saw it on TV. This other step of inspiration that we can kind of forget about. We can get so caught into our own world that we forget that each leader has their own leaders their own inspirations, and each leader has their own followers, no matter what area of life you're in, no matter what part of your journey you are on. And it's an amazing journey. Welcome to being a transformational leader. Here you are. <laughs> Once you're doing this work, I want you to ask, are you doing your transformation or are you being your transformation? Here comes the importance of embodiment, right? Not just doing it, but really being it. And this is where a transformational leader that is able to really get someone from point A to point B, they can show that and share that through their being, through truth, authenticity, and visibility. As you become more true and authentic with yourself, it's like, okay, cool, like I am, I am being this, but are you able to be seen during your transformation? So as that kid, the first kid that went over the monkey bars, was he able to be seen while he tried and maybe messed up a few times before getting all the way across? Or did he only do this after hours? No, he did it during recess when every other kid was out there. So you have to be okay with being seen in your truth, in your beauty, in your boldness, in these courageous steps that you're doing forward, and also in your evolution process which is always going to be messy. It's always gonna have some messy parts. If it is not messy, I might be calling you out here because there's something that you're gonna be, that you're holding yourself back from. Usually there's this fear of success and really what would actually have to change in your life if you truly put yourself on the line, put yourself out there, really went into your full experience of transformation. So you can do it at your own rate, but definitely take note. If things are really easy and not really getting messy at all, are you challenging yourself enough? Do you believe that you could get through the mess? Do you trust in the process and in yourself to go into a messy situation and, and be able to come out alive? It's good questions to ask. And from that space, your vibe attracts your tribe. I'm sure you've heard that before. As you get to share your fears, your failures, your triumphs, your values, your virtues, your stories that are so rich with all of these components, that's when you'll begin to attract others that resonate. It will be easy to gain followers, clients, supporters, because you're just being in your truth and you're putting yourself out there, being visible, being seen, in all of it that is key no one wants to just like see someone that's perfect showing up and and sharing oh yeah well this is my perfect life and this is how easy it's been mm -mm. we want real honesty we want real truth right and i can share with you like the beginning of me stepping into being a transformational leader right i could easily say it started being a little kid but when i truly started to follow this journey, I was terrified. I was scared that people were going to say bad things about me. I had that fear of just being fake, being like, I don't really know if I'm qualified to be a transformational leader. What am I going to talk about? And I remember just like sitting in a funk because it felt even more frustrating. It's where that anger can kind of come in. I felt so frustrated that I knew that I was supposed to be doing something bigger, serving people in a bigger way. And I knew my own story and how powerful transformation had been in my life. But I felt so frustrated in the fact that I had not stepped into that role. And I didn't, you know, I could have easily just sat in front of an empty room and shared my story. But if no one was there, 
it felt sad that they weren't able to receive my message. And so it's where consistency, that vision space, and that dedication comes in and kind of circles back to the original question. Why do you want to be a transformational leader? What do you have to share that is unique to you? And I'm not saying this in a way of like poking and saying, oh, I don't think you have it. But actually, I'm, I'm massaging the idea that you have a unique story. You have a unique situation that guided you exactly to this point. Maybe you're, you're watching it unfold literally as we speak. And that is the key that you get to share with others. And of course, there are always going to be new steps of growth and new layers that you get to unravel during this transformational process. New fears are going to come up that you're going to have to face. And sometimes you'll want to break. That again is when you get to come and reconnect with your why, reconnect with your commitment to this work and to living your best life, being a transformational leader, sharing your gifts and really seeing what is possible for yourself and for others in this heart-centered way. So, you know, take your time with the transformation, but trust me, once you have the red pill, you will never go back to the blue pill. Once you experience transformation and what can come when you go through it, right? A lot of people begin the journey and then they find themselves in a dark hole and they're like, I don't want this. I'm going to, let's reverse. Let's go back. Well, if you actually keep going through, you'll find that you're going to end up in that place that you've been dreaming of, that you've been hoping for, because those dreams, those hopes, those wishes were not given to you just to play with. They are real. So you're on a transformational journey. Love. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. Have fun. Do it with friends. Do it with mentors, inspirations around you. Do it with flowers and nature and reconnect to your why. So thank you so much for checking out this video, joining me, Ray Ireland, on the Soul Online show, the Soul Online podcast. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet, and I hope to see you all soon. Thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. And if you'd like to check out more videos, go ahead and tap the screen right there.